for tonight? I'm rooting for um, everybody black. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Betting on black tonight. Lovely. You look great. Welcome to Code Black Facts, where we talk about all things black to include news and viral videos, mental health, self-love, self-care, self-development, black women issues, crime stories, and black history. If you are interested in any of these topics, please subscribe to my channel, like, share, and don't forget to comment below. Thank you. Say it's a black thing when deep in the roots Black of the berry, baby, the sweet of the juice Hello, hello, hello everyone Thank you guys for tuning in to Code Black Facts You guys know I love you and appreciate you And if you are new to the channel, welcome I do invite you to subscribe and as well as join the conversation so I wanted to come on here today, you guys, and talk about this video that I saw on Twitter. So let me give you a little bit of background before I play the video. But it was a video of a black woman who basically was defending her family. She was defending her home, herself. And um, she actually went to jail for defending herself. And um, <clears throat> in the video, it talks that she... Uh, explains how she was treated like a criminal and how you know instead of them like trying to find out the person who came to her home and basically was trying to break into her home or her car instead of them trying to find that person they are basically handcuffing her taking her down and treating her like a criminal now um let me play the video and then I'll come back with my commentary. So give me a second here. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> Let me share my screen and I'll play the video for you guys. Um, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. This is... Urgh. Okay. I really need two screens here. This is... This is, okay. was defending her family from an intruder and decided to fire off warning shots instead of shooting that burglar. Video from Mahogany Gillum's ring doorbell camera shows the moment an intruder enters her Oakland home. And minutes later, Gillum walks outside and fires her 9mm handgun into the air. Call the police! This happened Thursday morning in the pre-dawn hours. I discharged my firearm with a warning for this person to leave. They don't do it. Gillum sat down with us to show us the footage and explain what happened. She argues she was protecting her home and her five kids who were asleep inside. Gillum said she had no way of knowing the intruder's intentions. I'm petrified. I'm still not knowing. I didn't know that they had retrieved my keys from inside on top of my entry table. Gillum said she grabbed her gun from a locked safe when she heard someone inside her house and then found a woman rummaging through her vehicle parked near the street. Gillum's daughter woke up and called police. Once officers arrived, Gillum said she was treated more like a criminal than a victim. She said things turned sour when she would not give police her registered firearm. I told them, well, um, I can bring the firearm to you because it's not here. Um, and I wouldn't be comfortable giving you the firearm after your guys' delay and you guys being so shorthanded. Gillum was put in handcuffs, had her phone taken away, and was served a search warrant. She said police were inside for hours looking for weapons and ammunition. I have two extended family members on the right and the left of me, both are white. I could not imagine their beautiful children being held in their living room in the same way that my children were. So did these officers make an attempt to find the intruder? Never. They had a full description. 
I reached out to the Oakland Police Department. A spokesperson said firing a gun into the air is illegal and reckless. Somebody could get hurt or killed. He would not comment on the search warrant, but said officers are still investigating. All right, so I want to go through some of these comments that I saw concerning this video. <clears throat> First of all, let me state uh, a few things, right? Um, I completely agree with this woman or anybody who makes the decision to protect their home, their family, themselves, so on and so forth. I am a firm advocate of Black people, in particular Black women, protecting themselves, their children. And as you guys could see, this woman was a single woman. She had five children in her home and she had every right to protect her home. You know, when somebody comes to your home unannounced, you know, trying to break into your home or your car, or whatever, you don't know what their intentions are. You don't know what these people are capable of doing. So she had every right to protect herself. Um, now, again, with as black people, we know that when it comes to the law, when it comes to equality, when it comes to, you know, your rights, things like that, we know that there are many double standards. We know that the same thing that other people in the dominant society get, we don't get. And we see this on a daily basis. We see this with the many injustices going around, whether it be in the school system, whether it be in the medical system, whether it be in the political system, whether it be in the you know criminal system, whatever system, in every system, we see that there is always you know, laws in place, policies in place, whatever, that does not apply to you, the Black person, as it would apply to a non-Black person. We see this. We see this all the time. And because we see this and we know this, we have to prepare ourselves for this. Meaning, when you decide or you make a decision to fire your firearm, right? You got to know that when you do that, that the same laws that may apply to the next person that's next door, her next door neighbor, I think she said her next door neighbors were, were white. They may not apply to you in the same way, boo. You got to know that. You have to. And you got to be ready for the consequences that go with that as well. And I can't tell you, like, like guys, we can't keep seeing the what, you know, the what we are going through in society and just disregarding it, acting like we're surprised. Right. Again, I am on board with this woman. I support this woman a thousand percent to protect her home, protect her children, especially. I agree with what she did. But what I also know is that, you know, when you decide to take that route, because, again, she had a choice to either shoot that person at that person or she had a choice to shoot in the air like she did. And depending on the decision that she made also depends on the consequences. And unfortunately, when it comes to black people in particular, this could have went, you know, it, the, the, the consequences could have been the same, right? She could have shot at this person, killed this person and still been treated like a criminal, still been treated like she was in the wrong, still been treated like, you know, she was not the victim. Right. And, and that's the cost. I, I hate to say, it, but that's the cost. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes that is the cost of being black, you guys. And I know that many of us, we've been through so much that we want to continue to live in delusion. We want to continue to act like, you know, you know, things don't apply to us in a certain way. In, in, in a different way than it would to the next group of people. But we can't walk around like that. We can't. Now, let me say this as a gun owner. I own a firearm. Matter of fact, I own several. I am also a single woman who stay alone. So if, uh, as a gun owner, I also know that when you, when I, if I was to go outside and fire my weapon, I am going to jail. Every like most people who own gun, like I don't know, but people know this now. Um, in most most places, most states, that's that's the law. That's how it is. Now I will say this: I, when I received my firearm, uh, back in the day, this was back in the day. Um, I'm in Texas, so in Texas, um, 
before there was open carry here in the state of Texas, you had to have a permit to, uh, to carry a firearm. So to get a permit, you have to take a class, a course. And in taking that course, you pretty much learn everything you need to know about owning a firearm, as well as the laws surrounding that firearm in the state of Texas. That's what the course is made up of. Uh, made up of. It's usually a six hour course that some people, they provide those six hours broken up. So you can take two classes for at three hours a piece, or you can do the whole six hours. Um, it's up to you, but most places it's like that. And when I took my course, like that's the first thing you learn. Like you learn, yo, if you fire that weapon in the air or you just go outside and just fire it just, just because you're going to jail. If somebody called the police, you're going to jail, like straight up. Now, unless you were out there firing at someone, then you're going to jail. And if you want to, if that's something that you want to do, then you need to know the consequences that come with that. And to be honest with you guys, I'm keeping it a buck. I don't think she did. I really don't. Because had she known that, I think that obviously the frustration would still be there. Obviously, you know, the the concern would still be there. Obviously, the, um, you know, the right to, to have the, you know, justice, you would all want that. That would still be there. That wouldn't go anywhere. But I, it, it, to me, it sounds like she's surprised that what, what is happening to her. As, I mean, as she should be, you know, of course, I mean, as she should be. But at the same time, it's like, you know, again, you guys, I'm going to have to go off of what like our brother Neely, Neely Fuller says. And he says that we are living in captivity. He says that black people, minority uh, along, you know, what my, he uses the word minority, but um, not minority. Uh, uh, Non-black people, um, we are living in captivity. We are captives. And he goes on to say that we are captives in a system called uh, white supremacy. And because we are captives, we got to know that we the same thing doesn't go for us. That, you know, when we leave our home, anything could happen. And that the best thing that we can do is be prepared. That's that that's our brother Neely Fuller to say that. And if you don't know who, who he is, then get familiar with him. He's a very logical uh older man. Um and he, he he's a good resource to to know if you're if you are interested in um you know learning about racism and how racism affects black people. He's a good resource to know. Now, with that being said, this woman, um, I don't think she knew the laws concerning that. And I also think that, um, you know, again, she had every right to do what she did. But for me, it's about the decision, right? It's about, okay, I'm going to do this. But when I do this, I know what the consequences will be. Because for me, you know, in the state of Texas, like, for example, I can, um, someone breaking into my car is just like them breaking into my home. In the state of Texas, your car is, by law, your car is an extension of your home. So if I go outside and I see somebody breaking in my car, I have every right, according to the law, to shoot them. But I know that if that something like that was to happen, because I'm black, that could mean something different for me. I know that. I am well aware of that and also well prepared for that. Right. I have uh, um, I have I have uh, insurance. Right. I have a certain insurance where if I was if I have to use my firearm or any weapon, if I have to use my car as a weapon, a gun as a weapon, a knife, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever I have to use, if I'm ever put in a position and I have to use something as a weapon, I have insurance that says if you do this, then we I have lawyers. I have a whole insurance that will cover all of my legal expenses if I was to do that. And the reason why I have that is because as a a gun owner and as a person who may one day be put in a position, hope to God I, I am never put in that position, but if I am ever put in that position, I don't want to be, be under the stress of having to get lawyers and having to do all of this other stuff. I would rather make one phone call, have that insurance in place, and then they take care of it from there. Because I think that's what would work best for me if I'm ever put in that position. And I think that as 
black people, we all should think like that. Given the circumstances, given the environment that we live in, we all should think like that. Because at every turn, it's always a double standard. At every turn, there's always injustice waiting around the corner, meaning that at every turn, you can do the same exact thing that your counterpart may do, and it it be completely different. And we have seen this. We just saw this not too long ago in the uh, uh, Ahmad Aubrey case. Did we not just see this? Did we not just see this? We see this all the time. We cannot keep seeing this stuff over and over and just think that it's not going to apply or that we will never be in that position one day. This is not to put fear in you guys. This is not to, you know, have you paranoid, but this is to to inform you and educate you on, you know, the obvious, you guys. The obvious. I don't like having to come before you guys and and you know always talk about you know the short end of the stick sometimes i don't like that i really don't i would like to come to you guys and always present rosy you know beautiful you know things i would but unfortunately that's not always the case and i'm gonna always be real right so let me um Go ahead and read some, because like I said, this video I found on Twitter, I, I found a tweet, and the person who tweeted this said, black people are the only people who get punished for lawfully defending ourselves and our families. And I agree with that completely. I agree with that completely. Um, you know, we know that the laws can be changed. They're changed pretty much every day, to be honest with you. One minute, the law could say, you know, you could drive without having a seatbelt on the next minute the law could say you can't laws change all the time okay and that just doesn't go for black people that go for just laws because the people who make the laws they don't the majority of them don't look like me the majority of them are making they are creating laws and are molding the laws to fit them in theirs and i don't know you know, if you guys know this or not, but people are always going to take care of them. It's always going to be a me, myself, and I type of thing with people because we live in that environment. As a matter of fact, that's taught. Individuality is taught. They don't teach people to, to, to respond as a group. They don't teach people to, they teach people, you, yourself, and I look out for you. And I get it. In, in many cases, depending on where you're from, depending on where you come from, that works because that's something that'll save your life. That's something that'll keep you out of trouble. Like I get why some people, some, not all, but some will teach their children to think like that because it does protect them in some cases. Okay. And also when it comes to this woman, like, you know, I think that she was coming from a, a good place. Like this woman didn't go outside and fire her firearm because, you know, she just wanted to shoot some shots and show everybody how tough and bad she was was and prove to people that she she will shoot this woman went out there because she was truly protecting her home she wanted to give this person the benefit of the doubt excuse me you guys i have to my computer is going low but she wanted to give this person the benefit of the doubt and to to give this person a warning right to say hey i'm giving you a warning get your butt on you finna you finna be six feet under get get on away from here but let me tell you something guys Look, when it comes to protection, right, because the system that we live in, we live in a system that don't always work for uh, us in our favor. Um, it's, it's, it's either going to be you or it's going to be the other person. And it don't matter if that person look like you or it don't matter if they don't. It's going to be you or them. When it comes to, look, I think the, the, the beautiful thing about us is that, you know, we are very humanistic people. We care we love that is engraved in our dna we are not the type of people who want to just go out and just just be shooting up people just because just be taking stuff just because we are not okay history speaks for itself we are not 
There's a war going on right now because a group of people decided that they were going to just go over and take some land. They're just going to take it. And we have seen that type of mentality play out over and over again. And we've seen that type of mentality literally go into, into countries and colonize people. And because we have seen that, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't meet nice and fair and, you know, oh, we just, go, we can't meet that with that. In, in a system of, of, of war, in a system of where people don't really, you know, pe people not going to look out for you. You can't meet, you know, hate with love. I'm sorry. I don't care what nobody says. You can't. I've said this before. We are the most um, emotional people. We pin our emotions to so much. And it's like, you can't be like that. When it comes to protecting, when it comes to, you know, putting your life on the line, you can't, you can't be emotional about that. It's a decision. It's like, okay, I'm a, I'm a do this. And this is what it's going to be. And again, I can't stress this enough. I am behind this sister 100%. I am for the sister 100%. I believe that she made the right decision to protect her home. Now, it's unfortunate that the consequences of that may cost her lawyer fees. The consequences of that may cost her, you know, maybe a little mark on her, her, on her criminal record or whatever. But that's what comes with being black. Like, it's unfortunate, but that's just what it is. Because to be quite honest, she could have chose to not do the warning shot and it's either her or the or the other person. And I'm gonna tell you something. You guys look. Personally speaking, I don't I don't look at it like I'm not finna if if it if it come down to it, I'm not finna guess. That I'm not to me that's too I'm not finna do that. If it if it comes down to it, my mind is already made up. Somebody break in my home, my car. My mind is already made up of what I'm gonna do. Now, whether things go as planned, that's a whole nother story. But my mind is, and we got to think like that. You got to think of, of every instance, every situation that you could end up in. If you get into your car and, you know, a situation pop off, you need to like role play that in your head. What are you going to do? What is the decision are you going to do? Are you going to be willing to stand by it? You have to think like that. You can't wait till something happened and now you're trying to backtrack and figure out what you're going to do. No, your mind should already be made up. Again, we, we every single day, what do we see? What are we seeing? Every day we see black people having to, you know, in, in, ending up in all kinds of situations. And as a woman who is a single, this woman is single. It wasn't no man that went out there to protect in her home. She had to. This woman had every right to do what she did. But again, the consequences of that, right, the law, right, the laws, is that, okay, if I do this, then this is what could possibly happen or this is what may happen. And then have a plan. I know I do. Like I said, I have insurance. If I have to use a knife to protect myself, and then I end up in a courtroom, I have insurance for that, you guys. If I have to use a golf club to protect myself and I end up in a courtroom, again, I have insurance for that as well. And the only reason why I have that insurance is because I own a firearm. I took a course. And in taking that course, I learned a, a type of insurance that you could purchase that will secure you if something like that happened that was actually not that much to get. So I want to real quickly go through some of these text messages. I mean, not text messages, these uh, tweets. Um, so they said the black people are only people I already read that. Um, it says it is sad, but in most local gun laws, you can't fire your firearm in the air to scare someone off. She has a right to defend herself, but once he ran away, she should have stayed inside. And that is so true. I agree with that too. I've seen, I watch a lot of, of, um, of these crime shows and stuff like that. And a lot of times if your defense is that you are protecting yourself, then if, especially if you're a black person, then you can't run 
like if after the person is is running off or have they ran away or you know you 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 know whatever and then you go after them and then you end up killing them or harming them um that could backfire but again when you black it could go it could go either way you damned if you, if you do you damned if you don't again like our brother uh neely fuller says you have to just be prepared you just gotta know what can happen it says it is illegal to fire a weapon in the air but clearly the message being sent is that it's Legal to scare and potentially harm people by breaking into their homes. I hope this sis gets the decent lawyer because it really should be open and shut. And I agree with that too. This is an open and shut case. We we see the video. We see her intent. Her intent was not to harm anybody. Her intent was, and thank God she didn't. Because bullets, when they go out, they don't have a name on it. They just go. A bullet ain't got a name on it. You shoot a bullet in the air, it come back down. It could kill whoever. It does not have a name on it. But um, the person was, uh, and then this, um, it says, how in the hell is firing in the air illegal? Again, see, that's that's the thing, you guys. It in most places it is illegal. It is illegal in most places. And and the, and the interesting thing too, you guys, is that when I go to again, I I got my I got more than one firearm. I got several. But when I um, got my my firearm, I'm in the state of Texas. There was uh, no open and carry law. So that meant that you had to get a permit if you wanted to carry your firearm on you. And in getting a permit, you, you have to take a course. And in taking that course, that's where you learn, you know, all these laws. Um, and I intentionally took a course from a black person. And because I wanted to get their perspective on, you know, gun laws, but then how does those gun laws play out as it relates to you, a black person, which I think he did a very good job on because, um, you know, he did a very good job. He would use real life uh, situations and stories uh, where black people had been involved and he would give, you know, good advice. So. Um, what else? What else? What else? It says, um, family, what it says, you can't really write, write how I currently feel, but I am taking a charge. Uh, this person is all right. Well, you guys, that's all I had. I just, I'm, I just wanted to share this. I thought this was very, um, interesting. Here's one. It says, it's time to build our police force. Everyone else has, we need to create our own emergency services to our so our lives can be uh, saved and the crime can be stopped no matter who commits it. I mean, I agree with that. But to be honest with you guys, uh, I think that's very far fetched. Um, because, you know. There have been times in the past, like, you know, um, the uh, Black Panthers, where they did create neighborhood um you know neighborhood services and things like that like protection of the community and they provided school programs and stuff like that and um you know we saw how that went there are going to be people that are going to be on board there are going to be people, people that are gonna, not going to be on board and there's going to always be red yellow and all kind of different color tapes when it comes to black people building things because for us, we got to do the most in order to build something. It's not going to be easy. But we see where people have done it. We see where people are actually doing it right now, too. I think that's all I wanted to talk about, you guys. Um, again, you know, as a black person, you can know your rights. I've heard, I've seen the videos where black people, they be getting arrested, be all up in handcuffs. I mean, I know my rights. I know my rights. And it's like, okay, you can know your rights. But, you know, when when they doing what they doing to you, they going to choose to do what they do. That ain't going to change. Um, Because knowing your rights, your, your rights only mean so much to the person who is supposed to enforce them. Who's supposed to protect those rights. It only means so much. And we see what they mean. You can have all the rights in the world and you still, we see what's still happening out here. Again, the double standards when it comes to equality, injustice, and all of that. Like there's always a double standard in every area 
you know, education, politics, medical, you know, um, in the crime, laws, everything. There's always, always. We just have to know this stuff. And then I think decide if something happens, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? Be prepared. Not saying that being prepared is going to, you know, miraculously, you know, help you or anything like that. But it eases your mind. Like, you know, you just know you don't have to scramble when something happens. You just know what it is. You know what you're going to do. And I think that's it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I covered everything that I wanted to cover. But I am interested in what your thoughts and comments are. Um, if you are new to the channel, thank you for watching. And I do invite you to subscribe. Um, I put out all types of comment. Um, so I'm sure it's something that you will find interesting that I talk about. Also, um, my content, I try to marinate on my content. I like to think about it, research it a little bit and then talk about it. I'm not the type of uh, content creator that's going to come on here, you know, like something happens and I see it and without thinking or, you know, whatever, I'm just going to jump on here and just talk about it. I don't do that. I don't do that. Either I'm already looking into it or, you know, I know I'm, I'm well versed or something like that. Like, so I, this is why I say my content is marinated. Like I like to marinate on it a little bit before I come to you guys. Um, I know I talk kind of fast. I think that's just because that's nerve, but hopefully you guys can uh, understand me and follow me. And uh, on that note, I'm out. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh, also, if you are um, want to send me um, topics to talk about and cover, you can email me at coblackfacts at gmail.com. It's on the screen and it also be in the, the um, description box as well. Also, again, you can subscribe, you can like, and please comment. I am trying to uh, build my channel as well as um, create more content that I think would be uh, valuable to um, many people. All right. Thank you. Bye.